And we're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our guest will be joining us this morning, Dr. Tui Mebawandu, who is a public health expert. Uh, we'll be talking health and, you know, the issues that we're faced with and how they're impacting us. However, some psychiatrists in the health sector have lamented the negative impact of the current scarcity of the narrow notes on the mental health of Nigerians. Now, according to them, the development is negatively affecting the mental health of the people and making some of them more vulnerable to mental health condition. The Vice President Association of Psychiatrists of Nigeria, Dr. Venor Veronica, said that the scarcity of the note had contributed to the existing mental health instability in the country. She also said that the pattern had brought many to a verge of developing psychiatric problems. She said the denial of scarcity had also made those who were vulnerable to mental health issues to totally develop mental health disorder, and while others uh, not vulnerable were also being put at risk. And uh, Dr. Two is also joining us this morning uh, to make sense of all of that I mean, some persons have been said this reported that patients are increasingly denied access to care at health facilities, as many of the facilities operate mainly on uh, cash systems or have poor e-payment systems. These facilities turn down transfers, insisting on cash payment before attending to patients. Uh, Dr. Tui, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Basti. Good morning, the team over there. Um, I hope you guys are having Naira. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're having Naira, but I think uh, we also look at having health, which is very important because they say health is wealth, but maybe we can domesticate that to say health is Naira. <laughs> Dr. Tui, you're welcome. Thank you. So I'd like to share your thoughts. Uh, how do you feel about you know this report that we're uh, getting from the medical sector, especially the mental health practitioners and also all the sectors of our health system? Well, um, obvious, it, it's quite obvious that we are underestimating the extent of damages to the mental state of the populace. We are underestimating the damage to the psyche and the confidence of the populace. We are also underestimating the damage invariably to our economy, to our country, um, and to the youth especially. You know. Now, let, let's put it in context. Um, for a long time, government has been posting what I would call a mind psychosis, a mind manipulation. The killing of thinking, it's a sort of mental side you know, um, on people. Let, let's, let's, let's speak it. We're just escaping from COVID-19. Um, and we tell that, well, we can get along and manage our lives. Uh, lo and behold, um, different policies came. We're having the economic challenges. Fuel is not there. And then, uh, just on one fell swoop, government chose to uh, warehouse all our money and take away the capacity to negotiate, the capacity to transact, the capacity to have free movement uh, from us. In such a way that you wake up every day, um, you are sequestered inside the corner of your house or you are moving from one queue to another queue, and then how would that be lead to the mental health of the people? When you, when you impose such um, suggest and toxic uh, measures on people, the first casualty is their mental state. First of all, the, the dominant thought in their mind would be how to escape from that uh, challenge. How do we escape from this? In the process of trying to escape from that, um, there have to be drastic pressures, you know, you could really trigger violence, you could trigger abnormal behavior, you could trigger drug use, you could trigger depression and even suicidal ideation. So you, you, you see the whole spectrum of what um, a policy, not probably thought as the government can do to a person. And I will give you a, a clear example. Here, yeah, if not for the fact that um, the client is a well known person, you know, to, to uh, who came and wanted to start medical care in fact. He couldn't transfer money, he couldn't pay, and the wife needs to have a baby. It's not a serious issue, you know, but of course, you have to his life first. That's a situation to save the life of the wife, save the life of the baby. And so, even up to now, many days after, the husband to look for where to get money to, 
put down. And so what's the matter? Of course, you need to um, pick uh, materials from from the market, from the suppliers. And they also say that since we don't have cash, we need cash to be able to run our, to buy our fuel, we need cash to run our generator, we need cash to, to do basic things, give us cash. That is how the cascade effect of this bad government policy um, is affecting everybody. Okay, Doc, um, apart from the, the, you know, the mental health aspect of it, we look at also access to medical uh, uh, care you know, without cash. Uh, this is a, a challenge. I personally have faced this. Uh, I, I, a particular teaching hospital I wouldn't name, um, a number of times I had to, you know, uh, take someone, a family member, close family member there, uh, wasn't able to access care at an accident and emergency ward because I didn't have cash. Um, the POS was not working. They didn't have, they not, could not use it. And I had to go very far while the patient was, was waiting from a stroke to be attended to because I needed to look for the nearest ATM to be able to withdraw cash. Now, if this is still playing out in public health facilities, let's not even talk about the private ones, it therefore means that people will be finding it difficult to, you know, to stay alive. Um, why is this the case till now? And what do you think should be done about this? Well, it's a, it's a very sad situation, honestly. We should not gloss over this thing. And for me, um, maybe not to talk the political aspect of it, let me talk the health aspect. Um, a nation where just about 4% have health insurance, a nation where nine, more than 90% of payment for health care services is out of pocket expenses, okay? That means you have to put your hand into your pocket and bring out a big out money to pay. A nation whereby trust level is so diminished, where clients escape from the, even the centers in those days when um, uh, there was no this um, uh, constrained cash policy. A nation where you have to go all the way, even if you need to resolve issue with anybody, uh, cannot get justice. A nation whereby the roads are bad, accidents happen. This is happening, the endemic is running, the pandemic is hanging around the earth. And then we're looking, we usually use money to save a lot of people with this care. So, how do you know, it, one of the first casualties of this uh, mindless policy is the fact that uh, it keeps access to health. Like you really pointed out, that I've illustrated with the client, it's up for the fact that uh, there's a relationship to God now. So, access to health is a big issue. Access to health is further compromised because at the end of the day, even the man that has money is not getting the money transferred. Um, the person that wants to buy this, I think, uh, from to to this society cannot get those things. And okay. then um, everybody is uh, I'm figuring out that all they are trying to do is to prevent from buying food. That's why they have to, to, to push on us this atrocious and uh, constricting policy. All right, uh, Dr. Tuyi, uh, we have to go now, but in less than a minute, I'd like you to, to speak to other health concerns that probably might be associated with, you know, the narrow scarcity. Uh, we know the uh, psychiatrists. That, that, that is a, a huge logistic um, work, you know. Um, you need to run ambulances. You need to answer to emergencies. You need to do drug supply, okay? Um... Quite a lot of things, you need to transport patients from here to the other. All these things are capital issues. You need to get blood and get the blood to the person who needs it on time. You need to run lab, lab, lab studies that you have to deliver your results appropriately. And then um, there are a lot of future expenses in the health system and health where nationwide. All those things are constrained. All those things are not available. And then at the end of the day, when this thing starts to start, we need to see that quantify the loss, both not just economic loss, but also loss in terms of human life and health patient. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be more good. All right. Dr. Tuyu Meba Wandu, we have to go now. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. I mean, we Thank look you. forward to sharing your thoughts on all the health concerns as we proceed in 2023.
Wow, uh, a lot going on and massive. We've heard of stories um, of uh, you know, people passing on in um, uh, recently in, uh, I think it was in in, in Kaduna State, a um, pregnant woman passed on because they didn't have a, a cash. You know, there was no POS around and they were not accepting transfer. It's really sad. Needless deaths. Um, please, whatever you do, do stay uh, safe out there. We pray the situation gets better. But uh, that's the size of our package. Be informed, you can follow us on our social media platforms. Uh, Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and indeed we're on YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can also check out our website as well for the latest news and information. Uh, my name is Kofi Bartel. And I am Messi Ibopo. We joined the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. Good morning.